Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio. The Saskatchewan adventure continues. Probably 40 inch plus 40 fish. Plus, yeah. 15 right, of them. Go. Four or five geese is sitting there right beside the blind. Yeah, I washed our dock right away. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting on the Sporting Journal Radio Network, wherever you get your podcasts or watch on YouTube. Ooh, fish on. Fish on right now. Oh. Well, we're here at the 2024 Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. And our guest now is Jeremy Smith. I fish, I hunt, and always will. It's just to look out for your everyday hunter, angler, and, and trapper that's out there. A Fish on Forever production. This is Sporting Journal Radio. All right, welcome to the show. I'm Brett Amundsen along with Dan Amundsen. Thank you for tuning in on the Radio Network by demand or watching this on YouTube. Dan, the epic Saskatchewan adventure is coming to an end. Time to go home. Uh, we're probably overstaying our welcome here. I think we got to declare how many weeks you're in Canada and there's some form of limit before they start asking questions. We might be pushing it. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think we're quite there yet, but it has been a long trip here in Saskatchewan. It's been a good one, a couple of weeks, and um, I might just send you on a home on a flight from Regina. There's a direct one to Minneapolis. <laughs> yes. And, uh, we can do that. Might send you home and stay uh, stay up here since I'm going to be back in uh, in about a month to do some deer hunting up here at Trails and Outfitters, which we've been all over the province on this trip. We kind of started in Regina and based out of Regina for a while. And that's a good place for you to start. If you want to make a trip up here, you can fly direct from Minneapolis, like Dan said, or you can drive up. It's from Minnesota. I mean, you're you're talking to Regina, what, 12 hours? 10, 12 hours, yeah. Whatever it was. It's Easy not peasy. And, uh, a lot of highway driving so pretty easy drive uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you can make a trip to saskatchewan on this week's podcast we're also um, going to talk about some opportunities including uh, deer hunting bear hunting fishing and of course waterfall hunting um, like i said we traveled all over the place and we ended up here just to see our friends uh barry prawl at trail sand outfitters we're on the shores of tobin lake right now it's hard to be here and not fish dan yeah it looks really good obviously uh fall fishing is good in a lot of places you know we're going to talk to joe henry here pretty quick about uh, the fall fishing at lake of the woods and i'm pretty sure the fall fishing here is uh also fantastic but we are here uh not fishing that's right that's right and we're, i mean we're just kind of hanging out and we uh, we were seeing Trevor Montgomery and of course Barry and Trevor own Taz and Lake Lodge up in the northwest corner of the province and we went uh, waterfall hunting uh, here in Saskatchewan with Trevor and his son Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. Bradshaw's first ever goose hunt at 14 years old and we'll talk about how that went. It was a su successful mission. That's all, we'll, that's all we'll say about that. We'll explain how that hunt went coming up a little bit later in the show and uh, and yeah we, we know we're heading home and maybe I don't know maybe we'll have to get a trip into Lake of the Woods. Do some fishing up there. Yeah, maybe catch uh, some blast. Now is the time. I wanted to do a little bit more grouse hunting while we were up here, and we did do a little bit. Mm -hmm. Shot some grouse. Uh, some, but I not as I didn't scratch that itch as much as I would like to. So. Maybe a trip to Lake of the Woods is in order. Now is the time. All right, we'll get a report from Joe Henry coming up in a little bit. But first, Dan, who are the sponsors on this week's show? The official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever is Invergrove Toyota. When looking for your no, new rig, head to Invergrove Toyota. Lake of the Woods Tourism. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. Uh, plan a trip for this fall or winter at Lake of the Woods MN.com. On X Hunt, see private land boundaries, recent imagery, offline maps, and Minnesota-specific hunt layers. Download the Onyx Hunt app today. Taz and Lake Lodge. Catch world record lake trout and giant pike at Saskatchewan's Taz and Lake. Learn more at tazandlake.com. Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Catch it all at Devil's Lake. Prairie Sportsman. New season wrapped up this spring, but we are filming new episodes right now, and you can watch old episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort Fish Devil's Lake this fall or winter. Learn more at haybaleheights.com and Guardian Eagle Resort. Plan a trip for next summer. Go fish the Ontario waters of Guardian Eagle Resort. You can fly directly to the lodge from the Twin Cities. Learn more at guardianeagle.com. All right, it is the best time of the year, in my opinion. You know, uh, the rut's going to be kicking in pretty soon for you hunters out there. You both hunters starting to see some buck activity some bachelor groups have been showing up on camera mm -hmm. i know um i'm anxious to get back and climb up into a tree and over the next few weeks it's just going to keep getting better and better the waterfall migration is on we're starting to hear about some pushes into minnesota for uh for ducks and geese also uh the dakotas i know we heard about some cranes getting into the dakotas and some snow geese starting to show up there so uh, now it's time, of course, pheasant season is open, and, and Dan, by all accounts, what we heard from the Minnesota DNR is that uh, it kind of depended on where you were. Yeah, I heard it was actually pretty slow, which yeah. surprises me, but I guess I haven't been around for the last few weeks to really know what's going on, so 
maybe there's a lot of crops. I mean, I, don't, I can't give you a good pheasant report because I wasn't there. <laughs> well, I know so. um, we're hearing from our friends that are farmers back home that the corn is corn is coming out. Yeah. And, and honestly, I feel like this is probably uh, about the, you know, it's probably on schedule. I know they were talking about maybe a late harvest for, for some of the corn, and maybe it is just a little bit late, but corn is coming out, um, some beans are coming out. So I think it depended on where you were. If there were still standing crops, you probably had a slower day um, than, than other people. But um, I know it's the first pheasant opener I haven't hunted in, in a few years. That's, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you there. Well, I'm, I mean, if I'm not going to be doing that, I'm pretty happy being up here in Saskatchewan chasing uh, white birds around. So um, anxious to get back home and, and uh, start walking the grass with the dogs and, and chasing birds around. And I did, you know, we did shoot some rough grouse up here. Mm -hmm. And um, I was pretty anxious to eat some because we don't shoot roughies very often. And I know they're delicious. And uh, so, so we cooked some up the other night, Dan. I cooked some up. Well, you, yeah. I pan fried them. You pan fried them and uh, roll them in flour, pan flour fried them. Flour and, and butter and pepper. That's all you need to cook sure. a rough grouse. I agree with that. Do you? Uh, yeah. I don't think you do. Well, yeah. I mean, I. So I make pheasant a lot and I try a lot of different ways. And one of the ways I do it is I get some pasta and I do like a chicken fettuccine, only us, I'll throw some pheasant in there. So I did that with the grouse and you were not happy. Is with a me. grouse pheasant? Uh, no. Is a grouse chicken? Well, it's some people call them chickens, chickens yeah. <laughs> Why, you, you don't have to treat all white meat the same. You don't treat all the red meat the same. You don't take a filet mignon from Manny's Steakhouse and roll it around in steak sauce or ketchup or Alfredo. I that. Yeah, you, it's gonna taste fine. It's gonna be it good. Was, oh, it's so good. But you don't do that. This grouse fettuccine, it was so good. And uh, yeah, I almost left some. I cause, so I cooked the fettuccine and then I dumped the fried pieces of grouse in there and mix it up with the pasta to kind of let the flavors mingle a little bit. Cause there, cause on my plate, that's what was gonna happen. Fine, then do that on your plate. Dan was mad at me. So this is a poll for you, for those of you listening or watching. We want to hear from you. Which side are you on in this argument? Should I have left the grouse out of the pasta? Yes. Or was it okay to mix it in? You don't take a prized steak and roll it around in other junk. It's gonna taste fine. You don't put it on a sandwich. You don't do this, you don't do that. You don't put steak sauce on it. You don't put ketchup on it. You don't. You can do it, it's gonna taste fine, but. I wouldn't have put ketchup on it, that's for sure. Well, you put. And I don't yeah. use steak sauce on good steaks. Then you don't sure. put good white meat <laughs> in a pasta like that. Uh, was it good? It, like I said, it's going to taste good. Oh, so it's it going to be fine. Okay. But you don't do that. <laughs> you don't. Did I ruin the rough grouse by putting in pasta? Comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever else. I want to hear uh, what you thought about that. You know, the one thing I think we did agree on, though, Dan, is that we made pe goose pizza again. Yep. Using snow goose this yep. year. And it was really good. Yeah, see, that's a meat you do stuff like that, too. You know, it's... Oh, I don't know. It's pretty good. It's a its great... Own. It is. It's going to be good on its own, but it's <laughs> Why not... Why did you ruin it by putting it on It's not the filet mignon <laughs> of the sky. It's not the ribeye well, of the sky. The that's rough, great. The rough grouse is the premier wild game meat. Yeah, well, like, I, I haven't, I'm not sure I've sure. had a wild game meat, especially a bird, white meat, that's better. It's the best, So yeah, I agree. A snow goose is good, it's not the best. It's not a steak, it's not, you know, I'll eat it, I'll put it on the grill just fine, but it's something that you treat it more like a, like hamburger or a hot dog, because it's not like the ultimate meat. Well, I would say this about the rough grouse. It was good, but it's, it's not filet mignon. If it was filet mignon, I wouldn't. No, you're right. It's better. It. <laughs> the snow goose pizza was good. Um, we forgot to get sliced, like uh, um, shredded, shredded cheese. cheese. Yep. So we used the smoked Monterey Jack yep. cheese slices, like yep. sandwich slices. It worked out. It was awesome. That yeah, worked out. I thought out. it was really good. Yep. Um, I opted not for extra red pepper on there. I did. Yeah. How, how many glasses of water did you drink? I was thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little over seasoned, but. It was good though. It was great. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing to know from this, regardless of the grouse conversation, if you're looking, like you hear people talk about even Canada geese being uh, sky carp. <clears throat> people think about that with snow geese. And part of that I think is a perception that because there's no limit on them in the spring in a lot of areas that they're just, it's okay just for wanton waste since it is legal to dump them in the spring in some areas. But <clears throat> it doesn't mean it's not a good, delicious, healthy protein that you can make taste good on their own, they're fine. I wish there's a little bit more fat on them. 
we didn't see a ton of fat on these snows. This It'll year. happen. It'll come. It, it will, but I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. the ones we shot, and we shot a fair amount yeah. of them, didn't have a ton of fat. No. Well, you got to think where they're coming from, right? They just flew a thousand miles or whatever of right. poor uh, food sources along that way. So They haven't had a chance you know, to fatten up. There, honestly, there was a lot of them that we cleaned that their, their chests were kind of concaved a little bit they were so skinny and you know working real hard and that's probably part of the reason why they're so not going to say so easy to hunt but easier to hunt up here because yeah. they're <clears throat> way more they're, they're just hungrier they're ready to eat they need to pack on the food so they're going to try to get into those those decoy spreads and, and eat because they uh, they need it because they got a long journey ahead of them some landed didn't want to leave yeah you know they're, they're so they tired up and drop back yep. down and the spread kind of feels sorry for them a little bit but they're delicious on a pizza so <laughs> uh we want to thank some friends of ours that we met up here in saskatchewan they gifted us some moose milk which is uh it's actually from alberta but i guess it's kind of a canadian delicacy what's really neat about it if you read the back it's from Elk Island Spirits Company, and it says, once a festive drink exclusive to the Canadian Armed Forces, with a nod to our fighting men and women, we bring you the finest handcrafted Canadian cream liquor, and no moose were harmed in the making of this product. It's not actual moose milk. Enjoy responsibly. Um, so it's like a, um, I'm not gonna compare it to a Bailey's. That's what it's, a but it's, it's a cream, cream liqueur. liqueur. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. And oh, I should have grabbed this bottle earlier. This is a, this one is a Saskatchewan product from Rama, Saskatchewan. It's uh, some small batch vodka, uh, Dobrowdy, Dobrowdy, Dobrowdy Distillery. So uh, thank you very much for those gifts right there. Uh, I'm excited to try them out. Well, maybe put a, maybe I, I may have a little bit of moose milk in my coffee this morning right now, as a matter of fact. So uh, more from Saskatchewan coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, how you can take trips up here, what you can do up here, uh, including some uh, whitetail, uh, bear hunts, some fishing. Maybe you want to fish Tobin Lake. We'll explain how all that can happen with Barry Prawl, Trevor Montgomery, his son Brad, his 14-year-old uh, son who had his first goose hunt the other day. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how that went. And we got a fishing report from Lake of the Woods with Joe Henry when we come back on Sporting Journal Radio. Now is the time to start thinking about chasing big walleyes on Devil's Lake. Get on the fish at Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort. Hay Bale Heights makes it easy for you to make memories on legendary Devil's Lake with guided fishing and lodging packages. Or bring your own boat and rent one of their cabins on East Bay. Hay Bale Heights offers a private marina, fish cleaning station, and the opportunity to relax and enjoy your bucket list trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. To book your trip, visit haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. Hey, if you're looking for world-class walleye fishing and maybe some waterfall hunting as well, check out Devil's Lake, North Dakota. The walleye bite is strong, of course, in the winter. The perch fishing is unreal. And right now you can do some cast and blast stuff up there. Uh, whether you wanna go up there and try it out, maybe uh, uh, go with some of the guides that they've got around Devil's Lake. Learn more about it at devilslakend.com. Catch it all at Devil's Lake. Visit devilslakend.com. Com. All right, welcome back to the show. We're going to talk to Joe Henry now from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, how's it going? Hey, Brad, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well as well. And we're we're on our way back to Minnesota. And uh, I'm actually, I kind of got... I kind of got the itch to do some grouse hunting, Joe, and, uh, and and obviously fall fishing is great too. Dan always wants to fish. We're kind of thinking about maybe a Lake of the Woods trip this fall. Well, <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you from firsthand experience because I was in the water a day and a half ago. Uh, it was uh, it was good fishing, really good fishing, just like we've been reporting. Uh, uh, you know, Brad, I was up there filming with uh, John Thielen of Destination Fish, and um, we wanted to do a show out of a charter boat. So. Uh, just to show that, you know, we always talk about the rainy river, rainy river, rainy river, and there's pile, there's a pile of walleyes in the river. But we wanted to show that, hey, that there's still, I mean, there's opportunities up and down that south shore of the, of the lake. I'm still in a charter boat. There's also opportunities up at the northwest angle. So we, in this case, took out a charter boat. We, uh, we went out of the rainy river in the morning and just him and I in. We went out to about 27 feet of water out in front of the lighthouse gap. And we anchored up. There's, there's a lot of fish out there. Mark, marked a lot of fish, that's why I stopped and anchored. We uh, we started jigging and I'm looking at the water and I look over at John and go, this water look dirty to you? He's like, yeah, it kind of does. He brings his jig up and I stuck my rod tip in the water. He brings his jig up, I'm like, I could only see my jig about a half foot. Hmm. So I'm like, this is good. We might have to go to a plan B. Let's just sit here for a half hour and see what happens. I got one little bite and, and it just wasn't going. So 
we'd had a tip to, down the shoreline um, of another bike going on um, kind of by the Long Point Twin Islands area. So we, we shot down to that neck of the woods and, and with intent of finding cleaner water. And we certainly did. Once we got down there, it was you know way cleaner. We anchored up uh, uh, in a spot where probably 25 and a half feet of water anchored up. Uh, thankfully, uh, John had picked up the bait. He had four bags of frozen emerald shiners. I'm glad he got a lot of bait because I'm not kidding. You put a emerald shiner on your jig and you let it down and you get bit, you'd set the hook and the shiner would come off and you'd pull it up and put another one on and drop it down. And we, we caught a lot of small fish. We missed a lot of fish and we caught a lot of nice, nice eater fish, both walleyes and saugers. Uh, we limited out on walleyes and saugers, both of us did. We got three bonus jumbo perch. Now mm. we didn't get any big walleyes. We didn't get any kickers. We kind of wanted to because we we're filming a, a destination fish TV show. However, boy, the fishing was fantastic. Well, what was really kind of funny is we came back into the uh, fish cleaning shack and we we're cleaning our fish, and uh, some guys came in. You know, we started chit chat with them. They had some really nice walleyes also. We're like, well, man, where were you guys fishing? You know, and they're like, oh yeah, no, we were. Uh, yeah, we, we went out in the lake, and then one of our buddies was fishing in the river, and he said, man, you might want to come back to the river. We're smoking them. So he went back to the river, anchored up across from the resorts, and uh, got two limits real quick. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I'll tell you something. When we went out that morning, it was interesting because we went out, and it was kind of foggy out, and uh, there was a whole bunch of birds, a whole bunch of seagulls hit, you know, in the river, sitting on the river and stuff, and mm. that's usually a sign that some shiners moved in. And sure enough, a, a pot of big pot of walleyes moved in that night there had been fish in the river people were catching fish but uh, just recently you could tell a big batch moved in because four mile bay was lit up and that whole area down by the resorts was lit up i mean everybody was catching walleyes so that's how it goes right it comes in waves you just never know you just got to go fishing yeah so i know everybody waits for that shiner run so it sounds like it's on but you're still catching fish out in the lake too 100 percent yeah, yeah 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 and you know i i say the lake too because there, you know, there's a lot of resorts along the South Shore that they don't yeah. target the river at all. Now, I would say this is that if you trailer a boat, you know, to one of the South Shore resorts and you're going out fishing, if you ever get one of those days where it's just freaking violently windy, you know, yeah. and that can happen anywhere you go, then trail your boat over to the river. And you got 42 miles of navigable rainy river to go fishing in. And it's, it's just a nice backup. You know, but, yeah. And some of those fish don't even don't ever make it to the river. Right. I mean, they just spawn along the shoreline down there. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, the Rainy River is a great place to spawn, and, and right now they're not spawning. I, I, should, I said spawn. I don't know why I said spawn. Some fish never make it to the river. Yeah, no, they don't. There's a pile of fish that follow those shiners into the river from the basin, but the majority of fish, I would say, never touch that Rainy River. They're on that lake. That's where they live, and there's plenty of food out there. I mean, you know, I, 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 I in the fall, the reason we have the Rainy River run for listeners is that. You know, shiners, for whatever reason, we don't know exactly why, but shiners run up the river in the fall. And then the, nat the walleyes naturally from the lake will follow those shiners because that's their, one of the, the main sources of forage for them. Um, and then, of course, we, we target the river in the spring, too, because that's when the fish come up to spawn. Some of the fish do. Right. So... Yeah, well, uh, that's good to hear. And then when it comes to like the hunting side of things, uh, there's probably, I know I, I saw some stuff from Andy Reeves up at the Northwest Angle. They're out there running the layout boats and they've been they've been shooting a bunch of ducks up there. And uh, I know some guys that have been grouse hunting up there and uh, they've been having su success as well. And if the, if the lake was a little cloudy, you probably had a little bit of wind. And this time of year, that usually means it's knocking the leaves off the trees and that makes the grouse hunting a little bit better. Have you heard what kind of conditions they're seeing out there? You know, I haven't heard, I haven't heard a lot on the grouse hunting, although I'm seeing a lot of friends of mine from, from the area uh, posting, uh, you know, grouse on social media. They went out and did, just walked for a little while and popped a few grouse, you know, and that sort of thing is very, very common. So the, the you know, the birds are abundant. Um, you know, right now we got our youth hunt going on and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, hmm. uh, there's been some archery hunting going on. Um, I talked to some people also that went duck hunting and they said that the divers uh, weren't in big numbers yet, but there were some, but they didn't shoot a lot of mallards. Hmm. So that was interesting. When we were out fishing, we could hear just a gaggle of geese along shore and along those fields. I think they are probably going back and forth from the lake to the, the agricultural fields, you know. Um, and then, you know what, I, I think the other thing is kind of no, noteworthy is I just posted on our Lake of the Woods Tourism Facebook page 
um, just a little updated report, but I put a picture of our weather report for the next couple of mm. weeks. And our weather looks very, very nice. Very little precipitation and very warm temps. And if you want to get some extra fall fishing in, I mean, this is a, the next couple of weeks are a great, great time to do so before uh, before deer hunting. It's also kind of interesting. I was talking to one of the resorters, and he goes, yeah, no, we got, you, we got quite a few people in camp the first week of November. Oh, they're hunting? Uh, some might go deer hunting, I think, but most of them are just really uh, avid fall fishermen, fall mm-hmm. anglers. And they know that some of those big walleyes will move into the Rainy River in, uh, in the late fall, right around that deer hunting time. Sure. And over, overall, have you been hearing reports on how the, the lake is doing, population numbers and things like that? Yeah, actually, we just had a, a Lake of the Woods fisheries input meeting. And, you know, we've been meeting for, you know, well, we've been meeting for years. But, you know, that's basically the, the, the sounding board for the DNR to be able to share information with stakeholders about how, how is the fishery? What are the population levels? What did test netting show? What kind of fishing pressure have we been getting? All those things. And our, the bottom line is this, our fishery with walleyes and saugers and pike and, and, uh, those, and, and sturgeon, um, those are the, the four fish they track mainly, uh, fantastic. They're getting all, there's a lot of perch in the system right now, a lot of nice saugers, good numbers of both walleyes and saugers. So I don't anticipate any changes with you know, things moving forward because our fishery is very healthy. That's the bottom line, and that's good. That's really good. Yeah, I mean, you, you hear, like social media is fun, but social media can be the worst sometimes. And you hear people say, well, this is this is happening here and this is happening here. And the ones that are out there doing the surveys, I mean, you'll, you'll have some anecdotal, um, you know, stories from people that are out there fishing. But when you have a fishery that big, fish are moving around, you know, you might not be in the same spot. But the guys that are out there doing the science and doing some of the research, they're the ones that are keeping a finger on the pulse of the fishery. And uh, they're saying things are things are pretty good. And because this is what they use to maybe talk about change in limits and regulations, right? Yep. Uh, they use this to uh, they, they ultimately they want to create a sustainable fishery. And, right. you know, this is what they use to find out, to, to figure out, should we change our, our number of fish you can keep? Should we change the slot limit? Do we, I mean, what, what kind of changes do we need to do? So what they're doing is they're putting a whole bunch of criteria in place so that down the road between what they feel a safe harvest level is for each species, plus about four or five different metrics that if any one of these things happen, it could be the canary in the coal mine. Um, we wanna make sure that we take a closer look at things. So they're really setting this whole thing up to be safe and to be careful to make sure that our populations stay in good order. And they're, they're doing a nice job. And these, these men and women work full time at this. They got a whole bunch of history behind them and they continue to, get, to gather information. It was interesting. They had put some transmitters in sturgeon. Hmm. And one of the things they, uh, they mentioned is they put a transmitter in, in a sturgeon in like Big Falls, which is way, way, it's it's actually east of a Birchdale. And in three days, that fish swam all the way up the river and went into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why why is that fish moving so much? Who knows? You know, uh, they, they showed some fish that were in the lake. And heck, there was fish that went from the Garden Island area over to Stony Point in the northwest corner, all the way down to Rocky Point, and then over to Long Point. And I mean, those fish are moving around a lot. You know why they do that, Joe? Because no, uh-uh. beca- because they can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that why? Is that why Europe and uh, uh, Canada right now? Yeah, pretty, pre- can? pretty much. You know, and honestly, it's a lot of the same reason. They're probably chasing food around, or or just roaming and exploring and, and going on an adventure. And that's the same thing that we're doing is gathering. It, it some was food it was and- interesting. You know, they, they they talked about a couple of uh, fish that were in the river and made long runs to the lake. But the interesting thing was they did it at about the same time. Like they stayed put, they stayed put, they stayed put. And then they both kind of left at the same time. So something triggered those fish. Was it temperature? Was it something in the water? Was it amount of daylight? Who knows, you know? You know, it's, uh, I've been learning more and more about how te- how much temperature affects fish and just how more sensitive to temperatures fish are, you know, than, than say we are. So, uh, you know, maybe that is exactly what it is. There's a, lot, there's a lot we don't know. Like a lot we, we, we make good educated guesses on, but there's a lot we don't know. It was interesting too, you know, uh, they talked about pulling up some of the sturgeon nets and how, and some of the sturgeon nets, there's like 
over a hundred small sturgeon in them. I mean, just loaded. And so the future is really bright as far as the fishery goes. A lot of, a lot of sturgeon being caught right now too on the Rainy River for those people that are, that are fishing for them. And, and even by some unsuspecting walleye anglers that are soaking a, a frozen emerald shiner. Well, you know, obviously the walleye fishing is what gets everybody excited up there, but I'll tell you what, the sturgeon fishery is as good as it gets there. And, you know, a lot of people talk about going to Canada for fishing, but while we've been up here, I think we've talked a lot of Canadians into coming down and joining us on the Rainy River next spring for our uh, SGR 500 uh, because of that sturgeon fishing and, and, of course, because of the walleye fishing too. So it's, uh, it's such a great fishery. And, Joe, if people want to plan a trip to Lake of the Woods or maybe start thinking about an ice fishing trip there, what should they do? I tell you what, things are shaping up well for our ice fishing with all those fish along the South Shore. Hey, check out our website, and that is Lake of the Woods. MN.com. Well, we are on the road in Saskatchewan, and when uh, I knew we were going to be taking some of these long road trips, whether it was down to Kentucky Lake uh, here a couple of weeks ago or coming up here to Saskatchewan, we we're going to be in the, in the truck and on the road for a long time. I wanted something dependable. I wanted something new. I went to Invergrove Toyota and bought myself a new Toyota Tundra. We call it the Fundra. You may see it, and if you do spot it, take a picture of it, post it on social media. You can win some prizes, but Invergrove Toyota has got a Toyota truck for you, whether it's the Tundra, whether it's uh, the Tacoma, which is all new and redesigned for 2024. And they sell more of these things than Chevy Colorados and Ford Rangers combined. And they start at just 36,195. Check them out and uh, you can even save some more money and get a deal on your trade-in as well. If you go to invergrovetoyota.com slash FHF and fill out the form right there, you'll get a deal on a new truck at Invergrove Toyota, Robert Street 494 in Invergrove Heights. If you want to catch a big walleye, go where the big walleyes are. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. With a variety of resorts and lodging facilities offering full service fishing, Lake of the Woods is also home to sturgeon, sauger, perch, trophy pike, muskie, smallmouth bass, burbot, and more. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods today. Go to lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, we're back on Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for tuning in on the network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com, or maybe by watching this on YouTube or, or watching it or downloading it on Spotify. Get it wherever you get your favorite podcast. The Saskatchewan adventure continues, and uh, I've got some of my friends from up here in Saskatchewan with us right now. Uh, Trevor Montgomery, his son Bradshaw. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good, and also Barry Prawl. And, you know, we've been making the rounds driving all over. We started in Regina and we have bounced uh, all across the province and we had to come up to uh, Tobin to Trailsend Outfitters here to see Barry. Um, so it's good to see you guys. And then of course, ha meeting up with Trevor and your son too. You guys also own Taz and Lake Lodge. So, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time together in the summer and the fall, it seems like uh, when we come up here to Saskatchewan. So it's good to see both of you guys. Same here. All right, and Barry, by the way, uh, the lodge here on Tobin looks great. I know you guys uh, you guys did a lot of work this year. Yeah, I did some work in the basement, yeah. You'll have to get just a little bit closer to that and maybe lean in when you talk, Barry. Okay. I, know, okay. <laughs> I know this is your favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I renovated the basement down there, put in a big bathroom. Uh, that's, it looks really nice. And then painted the door, did some work out on the, the deck in front too. Yeah, Actually, I did a little staining out on the outside. Yeah, it's nice. So uh, you got whitetail hunts coming up in a little bit. Um, you got bear hunts in the spring. Of course, you got ice fishing. You got some new shacks out here on Tobin Lake for uh, for walleye fishing, burbot, perch, whatever, whatever people might catch out there. And then, uh, and oh yeah, <laughs> pike. I mean, pike. Of course, it kind of goes without saying. I guess there's uh, the pike here, are crazy. I mean, we when we fished in the winter here a couple of years ago, there's a video on the Fish on Forever YouTube channel you can watch when we ice fished up here and. Uh, um, so the, the slot, explain what the slot is for pike here on Tobin. The slot, like uh, for walleye? Well, for pike, pike. like or both. Uh, It's just kind of an average size, or I don't even know exactly what it is for pike. It's probably about 35 inches to... I suppose you guys are in the metric system out yeah. here. Right? Yeah. 
100, yeah. centimeters? 129 yeah. and a half inches. 129 yeah. and a half inches. Like, yeah. That's you can keep. keep. Side. Yeah, anything over that has to go back. And that is nothing over 40 or anything, or just? No, it's like a 47 or, or something. Eight or something. Okay. You keep it, of course. Well, regardless, there's. The slot on the lake here allows some of those mid 30 inch fish. I know when we pulled a couple up through the ice, Dan and I uh, using tip ups, just just the shoulders and how fat they were. I'm like, this is a 40 inch fish for yeah. sure. And then it ends up being 35 or 36, oh, but yeah. just real healthy, nice pike out here. Yeah, so their heads look small. Yeah, they grow so fast. And they got so much girth. Hey? Beautiful fish. Right. Food base. Mika, Mika's walking around here making a little bit of noise. Apparently she needs her nails clipped, it sounds like. Um, but, you know, we've been uh, chasing geese around, uh, some waterfowl hunting while we've been up here. And uh, Trevor and Brad, uh, the three of us, and Dan, four of us, had a chance to do some hunting this week. And Brad, you got your first goose. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, an awesome time out there with you guys. You've never goose hunted before? Nope, first time. All right, and... Um, yeah, I, in fact, you haven't even, you hadn't spent a lot of time with a shotgun before either, right? No, not really. Shot twice. All right. But yeah, that was it. Uh, and you're 14? Yep. 14. So, uh, first time out goose hunting, shot your first goose. Yeah. It wasn't the first goose you shot at. No. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the whole goal was uh, to get you your first goose. So that first single came in, and the plan was none of us were going to shoot until you got until you got your goose. And that first one came in, and what happened? Do you remember? I had a couple misfires, and uh, <laughs> I did end up missing one. But yeah, and then was it the second goose? Second goose that came in. I, I don't remember the exact uh, the exact yeah, order, <laughs> but you did have some light hits, so you were you, the shotgun uh, needed a little uh, little lubrication. It's brand new, right? So yeah, it hadn't, it hadn't been broken yet, so it wasn't quite cycling well enough, and you were you were having some light hits there, which probably will throw that would throw a guy like me off too. But uh, but then we had we had a big group come. And we had a pair drop down and almost land. And I almost called the shot on that pair because they were centered up perfect, like just feet down right in front of us in the kill hole. And then they picked up. And after watching the video, one of them went somewhere else. I don't know where that one went, but the second one kind of skirted over the side of the spread and landed. And we had this big group come right over the top of us. And I think I tried to call the shot when the big group came over, but all of a sudden they were there. It happened too fast and, and you guys weren't able to pop up. But one dropped out of that and landed with the other single. So you guys were able to take your time, pop up. We had two geese on the ground in the decoys and they both got up at the same time. And Trevor, you shot the one on the right fold it up and what did you do and shot the one on the left and and that one dropped what? yeah dropped right away so you guys so you shot your first goose and you doubled up with your dad how cool is that yeah i'd say that's a pretty pretty cool first hunt or first goose hunt experience yeah for sure and trevor what do you think uh how cool was that to be able to get out there with your son like that yeah it was awesome it was definitely the outcome i was hoping for you know that's for sure to see him get his first goose and just be part of that and you know uh trying to get them to uh get all my boys to keep on the tradition right right now th this wasn't his first time hunting because you no. you shot a deer last year last year yeah yeah his first year yeah it was a spiker a spiker yep. yeah nice yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, some more geese came in. You guys had a couple more chances. Uh, that we had zero wind out there, so they were landing. They weren't quite doing it. Yeah, they were weird. Just though. perfect. But these geese also, I think, have been hunted a lot. Like I, I, we sat on these geese for about three days or something, trying to make sure that we had a good hunt for us for today for that day that that you came out, Brad. And. Um, they were in the field, in the field, in the field, and then they were bouncing to another one a couple miles away. And uh, and then the day before we hunted, they all went up to that field, the other field, and somebody was hunting it. So that's gonna screw up their world. And they didn't go into our field, so I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if, we were gonna, if any of the geese were gonna come back or what was gonna happen, but they kind of came back in small bunches. Mm -hmm. And we had a pretty good hunt. Could have could have definitely stacked up a few more birds, but that wasn't what it was all about. And then they started to land in the field right next to us, and then every flock after that, they they basically short stopped us, and then they sucked in every every bird coming off the roost after that. And we called her a day and went and went and sat in our our 
migrator spread, which we got set up for snow geese, which at this point where we're at, most of the snow geese are south of us, unfortunately. But as we pulled up to the decoy spread, what did we see out there? There is, for you guys say, four or five geese just sitting there right beside the blind? Yeah. Every time we left that decoy spread, because a lot of times we'll put a migrator spread out and just leave it all week when we're here and uh, and then but maybe bounce around and chase feeds. But every time we left and went scouting, we'd drive by our spread and there'd be live snow geese in the decoys. <laughs> so he could have stayed and sat and maybe shot at those birds too. But, you know, we got you uh, your Canada and got to see some other snows. So congratulations, man. Yeah, thanks. That was awesome. Um, Trevor, you and Barry uh, spent some time on Tobin not too long ago doing a little bit of fishing. You fished the Vanity Cup this year. Yep. Tell me about that experience because it's sound like we had better weather for waterfowl hunting than you guys did for fishing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we had uh, we did three, well, two and a half days or two and a quarter day pre-fish, I guess. And, uh, and fish was good. We caught lots of fish. The weather was decent. Uh, the last day, the Friday, uh, we did, we ended up getting out of here a little bit late and we slid out there and we got like an hour on the water, hour and 15 or so, and we hit our spot and right away Barry hooked into a, an over, a 28 incher, which is a measure fish, you know, a weight fish in the derby. So we're like, oh, right on, that's good. And then the next day actually, uh, you know, 40 mile an hour wind, five hours uh, sideways pounding rain, and then the next three hours were snowflakes that were about that big. And yeah, it was interesting. So it was a tough day that day. Um, we got some nice unders. You got, you know, we just couldn't nail into the overs. And and then we ended up- Somebody uh, did, what was like almost a 12 pounder that first day? It wasn't 11 something? Something like 11, four, six, 11. I think, or six, four, or something like that. Yeah, no, it was big fish. Yeah, and then day two, I think it was like a 12 something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I it was there good. was like seventy of them caught. On 70 day two. seventy overs yeah. on day two. Yeah. Wow. It was like, yeah, quite a few on day one too as well. They extended boundaries, so opened up a bunch of the lake this year, which was very nice, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, we had a good day on day two too as well. We just couldn't hook into overs. We had all of our nice supporting group, but we just couldn't get the big ones. And we had a good time. Some good camaraderie. Dialed in the boat a little more. Dialed in a few more techniques. Learned a little more. Did a little more mapping. So how does it, is it a, it's a measure tournament or is it a weigh-in? Do you have to bring fish in or how does it work? It's a weigh-in, but there's a slot limit. So you gotta, you're allowed three under 21 and a half inches. And then uh, you're allowed two over uh, 27 and a half inches. For the team. For the team, yeah. yeah. Or a combination of five unders, right? But yeah, so you're allowed to do that. And, you know, with this year, with the numbers of big fish, if you don't get two fish in your boat, two big ones in your boat, yeah, it's you're not up on the running anyway, you know. So you guys have been fishing it for a few years now. How did it? Uh, how did it look different looking around at the other boats that were out there fishing? What was different about how they were fishing? Uh, other years, everybody drifting, drifting lindies and that. And this year, of course, with forward-facing sonar, there was a lot more spot locking going on. I like to think we started that trend, Bear, for the last number of years. We were spot locking <laughs> on things, and all of a sudden, now everybody's spot locking. We're like, okay. You know, but yeah, every there's some boats that had two or three, you know, live, live scopes, scopes on their boat and that kind of stuff. We had one, and we're just learning the process. So next year, we'll have the second one on, and yeah, we'll figure it out. Do you think that contributed to the number of the higher number of overs having that? Or do you think, think it was just a better year? Well, no, number one, they extended the boundary. So we added 10 miles more a lake, you know, uh, including the river channel as well as, uh, as well as that forward facing sonar too. Yeah, it's a combination of both, I would say. Yeah, hmm. definitely. All right. Well, uh, Trevor Montgomery, Barry Prawl, Brad, Trevor's son Brad with us here on uh, Sporting Journal Radio. We're at Trails and Outfitters here on uh, on Tobin Lake as our Saskatchewan adventure continues. I want to I want you guys to, to stick around. Can you guys hang out for another segment here with us? Sure. Is that all right? Because I want to talk about Tazan Lake Lodge, of course. You guys are co-owners in Tazan Lake Lodge up in the northwest corner of the province. And uh, world record size lake trout pike over 50 inches and uh, had a great season up there once again. More with these guys when we come back. Hunting season will be here before you know it. And it's time to get ready for your next adventure with the OnX Hunt app. Whether you're traveling in search of roosters, elk, waterfowl, or looking to score on a whitetail close to home, OnX Hunt can help you be more successful this season. Route, plan, and navigate with private and public land boundaries, recent imagery, offline maps, and Minnesota-specific hunt layers. Download the Hunt app on the App Store or Google Play and join the millions of hunters that trust OnX Hunt. 
Well, if you're looking for a walleye destination where you can fly direct from Minneapolis, maybe fly direct from Chicago, you can go to Guardian Eagle Resort and land right at their concrete runway. This is a beautiful lodge, delicious food, and more walleyes than you'll ever want to catch in your life. Some big fish too, and uh, they've caught some big pike there this year. They caught some big walleyes. In fact, when we got there, I think somebody, what, Dan, somebody caught a 29, 29 and a half or something while we were there. This year, you can see our video on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel. They got 75,000 acres of private water. Learn more at guardianeagle.com. That's guardianeagle.com. All right, this is Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for watching on YouTube, Spotify. Maybe you're listening to this on one of the radio stations on the radio network or uh, downloading it wherever you get your favorite podcasts. We're in Saskatchewan once again, continuing this uh, epic adventure. Uh, Dan's behind the camera back there, and it's just been um, an absolute incredible trip. It's coming to an end, unfortunately, uh, but we got a ton of content that we'll be sharing on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel. You'll probably be seeing more here on, on uh, this channel with Sporting Journal Radio. And, um, you know, we want to thank Tourism Saskatchewan, Tourism Regina for everything we've gotten to do on this trip. Also, uh, Brandon Latane, who's been amazing, and uh, my dad and Dan's dad and Dan's brother-in-law, Mitch, of course, uh, for coming up and being part of this trip. And then and then the third leg here, meeting up with you guys. Um, you know, we whether we have success, you know, bird hunting or fishing or whatever, whatever we're doing up here, maybe uh, deer hunting next month up here at Barry's Place at Trails End Outfitters. Whether we have success or not, you know, it's just good to come up and see you guys. You know, we have so much fun when we're up here and we got to learn a lot more about our family history while we were here since, uh, you know, our, we can we can trace our family back to Saskatchewan roots when they came over from Sweden and uh, learned about, you know, we're, we're closing in on the location of our old family moose camp. We think we got the general area now. In fact, we met people last week that were related to people that hunted at that moose camp with our family. Cool. So it was like, oh, our, well, our family used to go there, you know. I'm like, well, what, oh, what was your life? Well, Amundsen. Oh yeah, my great grandma was good friends with, you know, your your great grandpa or whatever. Like it was, it was pretty wild. So it's great to to learn a little bit more about our family history. And of course, uh, you know, but I've been coming up here for a long time. Dan's been coming up now for quite a while, and it's just good to see you guys again. You know, and hang out. Absolutely. So, yeah. Would have been nice to do a little bit of fishing while we we're here. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I offered to. Be <laughs> I said you should have made a little fish instead of hunting, but it's so hard to do both. Oh, I you know, when you're trying to do, especially when you're waterfowl hunting, because it becomes such an all-day adventure. Sure. Um, you know, scouting in the evenings, maybe hunting in the evenings, mm -hmm. and then getting up early, not getting a lot of sleep, and then midday, you're, you're, you know, maybe cleaning birds or taking a nap or whatever it is. And and it was windy this week until yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah, Today it's a beautiful we, day, but that's it. Can't do them both. Yeah. Well, you could. Yeah. <laughs> We've tried it Not in the past. The daylight time ah, the man. That's the problem, yeah. right? You run out of daylight. I know. You know. Next time. But it is prime time for fishing right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, when, was that, when was the last time you were out on the lake? Was it recently or Sunday. was it the cup? The last Sunday. Oh, you yeah, just fished on cup, Sunday? Right? So, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, and Jeremy, he's been going out lately oh. and getting big walleyes. Oh, right. Back and big walleyes, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and Jeremy, of course, is one of the guys up at Tazan Lake Lodge mm -hmm. and uh, wrapped up another season there uh, this year. And, um, you know, great season once again. Everything was a little behind. Like, we noticed it back home in Minnesota. Yeah. We talked to people in Ontario. We talked to people just all over the region. Mm -hmm. and Alabama. Uh, yeah, down in Alabama, Alabama, everything was behind, it seemed like. So I don't know what the... What the conditions were if it was aliens or if it was you know, moon phases weather uh late spring whatever i know we had a you know we didn't we got snow around halloween last year and it got cold and then it dried up and it sounds like saskatchewan had the same thing got snow in october and then didn't get snow again until march yeah. uh yeah, that's the way we were yeah, yeah, too, yeah pretty similar up here so I don't know if that had an effect on, and I'm sure it had some effect on mm -hmm. the fishing, but it seemed like everything was behind. Yeah. And it, uh, you know, we caught nice fish while we were up there, but it sounded like as soon as we left Taz and things really picked up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we're two weeks behind likely. You know, uh, the water temperatures our first couple of weeks, we were fishing in high 30 degree water temperatures and we were you know, right. praying for to hit the 40s for the first couple of weeks. You're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know. But then, well, you know, we were still catching fish. Everything was still good, but it was just cold, cold water, you know. So then, but then after that, yeah, things picked up good and everything caught up and accelerated ahead and fishing was good. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was still good when we were there, but mm. you get so spoiled when you go yeah. to a place like that. And, you know, Dan caught his personal best pike up mm. there, 40, 45 and a half. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we caught some, you know, um, lake trout in the 40 inch over the 40 you know 40 inch plus range mm -hmm. and then after we left it sounds like you caught a nice one brad is that right yeah 44 inch laker oh there you go tell me what you were doing uh we we're just jigging we uh went out after dropping the family off at a uh an island uh, just to go explore um yeah i just jigged little what was it like a one ounce green jig and just pound on the bottom and yeah came back Came up and smacked it? Yep. How long was the fight? Eight minutes, something like that. How tired were your arms? <laughs> <laughs> not not too bad. Okay. But, yeah, I could, I could feel it in my left arm. <laughs> the one that I hold the rod in, so. All right. How about hold, who held up the fish for the picture? Me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. Those things are heavy, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Heavy and strong. You know, I don't think... You know, everyone wants to hold their fish, of course, yeah. and uh, I don't think some people realize if they've never caught one of those fish, just how just how they're like one big muscle when you catch mm -hmm. them, and they start flexing like this, and you got to hold on for dear life, and uh, they're fun fish to catch. And you guys actually came up in September again this year, mm -hmm. and you're trying to time that spawn. It's hard to time that spawn, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it sure is. We experienced that again, you know, where the spawn really was just starting to rock when we, when it was time for us to leave, you know. Uh, but everything had, was behind. Yeah, everything Once was again. behind, you know, but we had some great fishing. You know, uh, the one guy caught 15 big fish in, in the five days that he was there. And like, you're talking like probably 40 inch plus 40 fish, plus, 15 yeah. of yeah, them, well, maybe upper 30s. There's a couple in the high 30s, sure. you know, which is a great fish. 40s, yeah. yeah, up to. 46 or 7 was yeah, the biggest thing, so. something like that. But yeah, it was just some great fishing, you know. That's an, that's an amazing trip. Absolutely. And yeah. then Big Pike, too, as well, you know, so very nice. Yeah. That uh, and I know it. Uh, it was pretty dry in the province when the spring mm -hmm. up here. And when we when we were up there, uh, water levels were down a little bit. But it sounds like they came back up as the summer went on. Yeah, washed our dock right away. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh man, our spare our, our fire pump dog. Right. Red. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it sounds like we might have a line on it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that, it probably came up a couple feet. Yeah, really. Yeah. In the yeah, in the month we were going. <clears throat> Yeah. And I know uh, two years ago, there were a lot of wildfires, mm -hmm. um, particularly kind of west of the, the lake there. Yeah. And it pushed a lot of moose and, and mm -hmm. bear. And we had some pretty smoky days. And when we were there this year, there were a few wildfires around. But how did it rate wildfire wise this year compared to last year? No, nothing compared to last year, you know, because we had at one point we had, uh, you know, fires on three sides, yeah. one side of the lake, but then to the north and to the south. And only time in my guiding career I've ever prayed for an east wind because that's the only time the smoke would clear up last year, you know, whereas this year wasn't bad. Fires were farther away. We didn't get that thick, thick smoke like we did until we had that one between us and Athabasca there. But yeah, but it wasn't bad. Nothing like last year. Not near as big a fire. So yeah. You know, yeah. Sure. Last year, there were huge acres burning all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, obviously, fires are going to happen. It's just part of yeah. part of life in the north, right? You know, but uh, you just don't want them right at camp. <laughs> no. Well, and typically in the far north, they don't fight the fires unless it's, you know, threatening right. uh, property. And that's property or people, you know. And that's the beauty of where you guys are at on that island, too. <laughs> yes. You know, pretty protected over there. Absolutely. Yeah, so, we have a pretty good fire suppression system, and we're all dialed in on how to use it. So, yeah. Well, we had a great time up there. We got a new season of Taz and TV coming to the Taz and Lake Lodge YouTube channel. You'll be able to see some of these big fish that we talked about, including Dan's big pike and some of our big lake trout. And then, uh, uh, did you film Brad's? Do we get to see Brad's fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. got that on. Yeah, okay. head, head mount GoPro as well as a, a release on that too. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then you did some some painting, some glow paints, and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you did some of that two years ago as well too. So we're gonna see we're gonna see some of that I think in the upcoming seasons. So cool. we'll have some new footage coming. Uh, so check out Taz and Lake Lodge on YouTube. And of course, tazandlake.com. Follow, uh, follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and check them out on their website too. And you got some openings for next season up there? Yeah, we sure do. Season opens June 14. The run's September 12. 
And uh, so check it out, get your dates locked in. And uh, people are already booking for 2026, it sounds like, too. Yeah, so. yeah we've had some jumping ahead and trying That's to make sure they got a spot and, you know, yeah. Perfect. Ready, bringing their group and their friends and family. And absolutely. All right. And Barry, um, your spring bear uh, next year, you full? You looking no, for? Not quite. I have a little, a few openings for the first week. First week. Yeah. Okay. And when is that? Uh, like May 18th. The week, May 18th, you want to shoot a bear in Saskatchewan. Um, we filmed a bear hunt. You can see it on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel up here at Trails and Outfitters, and you will see bears. You will see bears. You'll see some color phases, some with the, the white patch on the chest, um, some young ones, of course. You'll see a, a variety of, of animals, but you'll see some big ones, too. Yeah, yeah. nice bears, uh, and, of course, fishing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they're combos. <clears throat> Staying at the Lakefront Lodge, beautiful big lodge. And then uh, ice fishing, uh, you still got some openings for people that want to come on ice fish to open? Yeah, you bet. Some new shacks and uh, you can sleep in them. Um, yeah. So sleeper shacks or you can rent the cabin, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then... Um, Deer hunting. So this year, do you can people still come up and, and book a, a whitetail trip this this fall yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could. It's getting kind of tight now because the of course everybody wants the the last few weeks of the season. Um, the rut. Yeah, the peak of the ruts like the end of November, you know, twenty fourth November, and they all want that week or the one after. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you still want to hunt, you better hurry. Well, I'm going to come up this year for it. I'm pretty excited about it. Our friend Danny Thompson is bringing his father up, and uh, we're going to film some of those hunts uh, for Trail Sand Outfitters. So uh, I'm excited. Do you have the trail cameras out yet? Just got them out, yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. So you don't even have pictures to show me yet? No, not ah, really. dang it. We'll give you stories, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a picture yeah. from my deer bait this morning, and I got a bear on it. Oh, there you yeah, go. I'm just over here. There's lots of bears over here, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Some and some wolves, probably. Oh, and um, yeah. All right. Uh, and then um, um, I had a question about that that I can't remember right now. But uh, oh, you got a big area that uh, you guide whitetail in, like mm -hmm. three hundred thousand acres ish. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge area. Yeah. Huge area. Yeah. So you get out there and uh, enjoy Saskatchewan, the the wild Saskatchewan yeah. uh, whitetail hunting. All right, trailsendoutfitters.com is the website. Uh, if you want to do some whitetail hunting, some ice fishing on Tobin, uh, some spring bear hunting, and of course, tazanlake.com for Tazan Lake Lodge. Brad, Trevor, Barry, thanks for coming on the show this week, guys. Thanks All for right. the invite. Yeah. yeah, you betcha. From Saskatchewan, our final show, probably our final show from Saskatchewan. You never really know. <laughs> You're going to have to, we're, we're going to leave kicking and screaming. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, share this video. Thanks for following us on YouTube, and we'll see you next week. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to SportingJournalRadio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to SportingJournalRadio.com.